Pittsburgh Steelers. The alarms have been going off for a while now about the quality of the offensive play. After Thursday night's loss to the Browns, there was a thought that maybe with that mini buy, Kenny Pickett, the rookie from Pitt, 20th overall pick in the draft, would become the new starter. Mike Tomlin made it very clear after the game he's not making the change. Here is Tomlin from his press conference on Tuesday about his assessment of the offense and how Mitch Trubisky is doing as he continues to be the starting quarterback. There are a lot of things that, that we need to do better. There are a lot of things that we'd like to do better. I think the best way to sum up my evaluation of it, whether it's the collective unit or components of the unit, is that we've been better with every outing. And, and so uh, it's reasonable to expect those pro- improvements to continue. Um, we haven't done enough to win the last two football games, and so um, there's reason for alarm as it pertains to that. But largely I'm seeing um, – improvements in all areas, whether it's individuals or whether it's the collective. What specifically with Mitch Trubisky do you like in the way that he's progressing? In all areas, um, in decision making and where he's going with the ball, the time in which he's making decisions, the prudent use of mobility, um, whether it's by schematics or or by ad lib, um, but just generally all areas. Look, here, here, here's where it was going on Thursday, and I don't know if we've had a chance to talk about this, Chris, primarily have. since you, you largely ignored me when I was in studio on Sunday. It is weird. We're sitting on completely different sides of the it room. It's like I we're know. not even in the same room I together. I know, I know. And every time I would go past you, you would want to put the meat hooks on me, and I would say, my back, my back, back my back. back. So that I know. Was it was no fun. Yeah. I couldn't beat you up. I know. It wasn't I, the same. I, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, w- what I heard Thursday night, and I wrote something about this at PFT before the game, Trubisky is on thin ice with everyone in the organization except the head coach. Mm. And there's a strong push in that building to turn the page to Kenny Pickett. And the frustration was that Trubisky isn't pulling the trigger. Yeah. These guys are open. He's not throwing the ball. And and that's the thing. I, I, I do radio on 93.7 The Fan every Wednesday afternoon, and they were on a Fire Matt Canada kick last week. It's like, guys, you don't have a backup offensive coordinator. You do have a backup quarterback. And and look, if the receivers are saying they're open, that's not an indictment of the plays. That's an indictment of the player who's supposed to give the ball to the open guy. Sure, sure. So so what we saw Thursday night, even though the Steelers lost, we saw Trubisky pulling the trigger. He we was. The throw to George Pickens. Yeah, exactly. The, the drop by – and I hate calling it a drop by Deontay Johnson because he was covered and it would have been a hell of a catch. But it was Trubisky throwing the ball to a guy who was covered sort of – but a guy who's good enough to go make the catch. Exactly. And he was doing it. And and that that was the improvement that I think Mike Tomlin's talking about, Chris. I think you're exactly right. It's the the aggressive, you know, the aggressive nature throwing like this here, just, you know, buying some time in the pocket, not looking to run for two or three or find the check down, but going, you know what? Let me pat the ball an extra time here and wait for this guy to clear the defender and now I can get a 15 or 20 yard gain. I think that's what people were frustrated with. You know, week one, let's just put it in context. Week one, it's hard to be, let it, cut it loose and be aggressive when you have a lead and your team, your defense keeps getting turnover. So that's going to put you into a little bit late. Let me be conservative. We're playing good. The coaches are probably saying that to you. Hey, don't make mistakes. We're going to win the game. Don't turn it over here. We'll win the game. Right? So that's hard. Week two, yeah, I, I understand, you know, the frustration there. I do. I get it. You know, at watching that film back later last week, you know, I understand. I can, George Pickens, I still don't like that he said 90%. He's running open, and it is not 90%, okay, if I sat there and did the numbers. But but I think that's what they're talking about, and that's what they're frustrated with was, you know, you said it right. There were just plays in the New England game where I think they thought, wait, if you just slide here and pat it one more time, you got the post. Or, you know, if you just come out and just – Give it a half second more. We're gonna hit a seam down the left sideline for a 25, or, you know, 25 left a seam down the uh, a pass down the seam. Sorry for a 25 yard gain, and they were missing out on those opportunities, and they don't always always you know come about. But I didn't look at them and go, oh my gosh, that's they gotta bench them. It's just it's everywhere. It's open all the time. Yeah, there was a handful of plays you'd like to see. But at the same time, it's hard also, and I think Mike Tomlin has a little heart to this, is going, we can't run the ball. We don't protect all that great. It's not that easy to play quarterback. And I think if you throw Kenny Pickett in there right now at this moment, you might still miss some of those plays because he's going to be like, whoa, whoa, I don't want to be over aggressive. Let me just protect the ball and do that. So they're waiting for the right moment. It's going to happen. 
It is, but I don't think he's ready to abandon ship yet. He wants to gut it out here with Trubisky and give Pickett plenty of time. And and I, I think in his heart of hearts, they don't want to play Pickett this year. They want him to sit out the year and follow the the you know some of the other great quarterbacks we've seen that have, have, have followed that mold before. Well, and I also think that given Trubisky's history, they recognize at some point he's going to get injured. Could, right. As he uses his mobility, and that sure. opens the door for Pickett, the same way it opened the door for Ben Roethlisberger in 2004. Yeah. It wasn't Tommy Maddox getting benched. Maddox got injured. Enter the backup quarterback. And I think part of this, too, and one of the reasons Trubisky's probably careful, because he knows he's got exactly. Kenny Pickett over his shoulder. Right. You don't want to start whipping the ball all over the place and throwing 35-yard interceptions. Exactly. And then the cries are going to be even louder for Pickett. But that's what they're going to have to deal with if they can't handle the Jets this weekend. they got a home game. Crowd is going to be hostile if Trubisky doesn't come out there and play like he did on Thursday night. Um, and then they've got that murderer's row. Bucks, Bills, Dolphins, Eagles, and then their bye. I think the week nine bye is what we need to watch. It, it could because be. Right. They could be two and six, Chris. Yeah. Going into that bye. No, no doubt. Two I mean, and it, six. It makes it makes sense. I mean, maybe that's what Tomlin's, you know, worried about. Wait, I don't want to we're we're not functioning well as an offense right now. To just throw our rookie quarterback out there with the Bills, the Bucks, and the Dolphins, and the Eagles on the horizon. You know, there's also that of just protecting the young player to, you know, again, not have to come out and go, whoa, we're, we're overmatched today and we need you to save the day. That, that's when the rookie throws three, four interceptions, gets beat up too much, holding the ball, trying to make a play, pressing the issue. So I, I think there's a lot of factors in play here. Tomlin's never been one to panic. He never is one, and he's never been one to make it all about the quarterback. You know, he believes in winning as a team. We know that in Pittsburgh. So and I, I think that's where he's uh, a little different, and not. And he's going to block the fan base out. But I think your point there is kind of real. Like, I do wonder if it's bad this week and they do lose to the Jets, I, I, maybe the public pressure might, might maybe becomes too much. That's, that's the only thing I wonder. I do think like, I kind of agree with you when I was looking at things last night going, I think they might just wait to the bye if it's not, you know, the way they like, uh, but this is a week here where if they get upset or lose this one and it doesn't look good, man, it's going to be uh, a lot of people calling into to Pittsburgh radio stations. And if they happen to win one or two of those four games on the horizon that they should lose all four and will be the underdogs in all four, then that may change the vibe going into the bye as well. And Mike Tomlin yesterday was asked about the fans, and he was very effusive. And, you know, we love our fans. We respect the fans. And, you know, he also said he didn't hear them chanting for Kenny Pickett during the home opener against the Patriots. They'll probably be loud enough this time around that he will hear them. And we'll just see what happens. And if they just come out and play well and beat the Jets, that at least puts a pin in it. But then they've got those four tough games. And hey, if they're two and six at the bye, they got to go seven and two down the stretch to avoid Mike Tomlin's first ever losing season as head coach of the Steelers. I don't know how much he cares about that because again, it is about laying the foundation for the future. Yeah. But they try to win every year. They they are the one team, and there are others that I think would fit this category but they are one where I believe it when they say every single year they want to win the Super Bowl that's their attitude that's their mindset every single year it's not just to sell tickets and keep people engaged hi it's Mike Florio thanks for watching PFT on YouTube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk